Good morning, everyone. It is so good to have you here with us this morning. Whether you are joining us here in the sanctuary or whether you are joining us online, uh, we welcome you to worship and we pray that God will speak to us, speak to each one of us uh, as we worship this morning, as we hear the words of God, as we hear the words of Scripture. Uh, let us join in worship this morning as we pray together. Gracious God, we do thank you for today. We thank you for the opportunity to come into worship this morning, to come together as the people of God in this place. We know that you meet us here. We know that you meet us in this place. And we trust that your spirit will speak to us in ways uh, that we may not fully expect. We know that you will show us your love and your grace in ways that lift us up. And we ask all of this, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Our opening scripture this morning comes from Psalm 40. And it's a psalm of David. And these are the words to the song that he wrote. I waited patiently for the Lord. He turned to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the slimy pit, out of the mud, mud and mire. He set my feet on a rock and gave me a firm place to stand. He put a new song in my mouth, a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see and fear the Lord and put their trust in him. Blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, who does not look to the proud, to those who turn aside to false gods. Many, Lord my God, are the wonders you have done, the things you planned for us. None can compare with you. Were I to speak and tell of your deeds, they would be too many to declare. Sacrifice and offering you do not desire. But my ears you have opened, burnt offerings and sin offerings you did not require. Then I said, here I am. I have come. It is written about me in the scroll. I desire to do your will, my God. Your law is written within my heart. I proclaim your saving acts to the great assembly. I do not seal my lips, Lord, as you know. I do not hide your righteousness with my heart. I speak of your faithfulness and your saving help. I do not conceal your love and your faithfulness from the great assembly. Do not withhold your mercy from me, Lord. May your love and faithfulness always protect me. For my troubles without number surround me. My sins have overtaken me and I cannot see. They are more than the hairs of my head and my heart fails within me. Be pleased to save me, Lord. Come quickly, Lord. To help me. May God add his blessing to the reading of his word this morning. And may we join this morning in singing uh, together, Everlasting God. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. Wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. Wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord our God. You reign forever, our hope, our song deliverer. You are the everlasting God, the everlasting God. Rise as we wait upon the Lord, wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord, wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord our God. i 
Jesus Christ, my righteousness. I cannot trust the sweetest frame, but only me, not Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, no other ground is seeking sand, all other ground is seeking sand. When darkness fails, His lovely face, I rest on His unchanging grace. Every high is every dim, my anchor holds within the veil. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. In both this covenant is blood, so forth be in the whelming flood. All around my soul gives way, he bends all my hope and stay. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. When he shall come with trumpet sound, no may I bend in him be found. In my righteousness alone, all must to stand before the throne. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. Then as we enter a time of prayer this morning, we will be talking a little bit later about the storms of life and the things that uh, we face each and every day, the big things of life that uh, try to pull us away from our faith in God. And sometimes we do need a breakthrough. Sometimes we do need a miracle that uh, appears, that comes, and to, to save us, to help us during these times. So we're going to sing together uh, Breakthrough Miracle Power.
Other prayer requests to share this morning? Yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. Definitely be praying for that. Absolutely. Yeah, and, and praise that God's brought you to this place. Other prayers to share. Let's go to God in prayer as the people of God in this place. Gracious God, we do come this morning. We come uh, as your people. We come as people who are flawed, who are broken. people who are struggling with various things. Yet, Lord, we come because you welcome us. You invite us. You love us for who we are and where we are. We come because you want to hear from us. And you meet us in this place. You meet us where we are at in ways that change our lives and make a huge difference for us. And so, Lord, we come to lift up the requests that have been shared this morning. Requests for healing from illness, recovery from surgeries, we come this morning to lift before you provisions of financial and, and relationships. Lord, we pray that it is, it is by your will that you answer these requests and that you provide for us what we need as we seek your kingdom. Lord, we pray for those who are in need of, of provision. And we ask that through your spirit that those needs are met and using your church in ways that are appropriate and, and important. Lord, we, and we do pray for the churches here in Dallas and we pray for First Christian here, that you will not only uh, work through us but that you will also provide for us what we need as we seek to be faithful Lord let us be your light and show your love in our communities on this day we remember Martin Luther King Jr. and his life and the way in which he 
worked for and fought for your will to be done. We remember him saying that, that hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. So, Lord, we pray that you will help us to love those around us unconditionally and extravagantly. Help us, Lord, to be your people in this place in ways that we can't even imagine right now, but in ways that you are leading us. And Lord, we do give you thanks for the blessings that you share with us. The blessings of friends and family, the blessings of provision, the blessings of, of even this place. And Lord, we pray that you will help us to use this place, this building, these resources for your glory and your kingdom. And we ask all of this, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. This morning I want to share with you a story that, that you may be familiar with. Uh, if you grew up in Sunday school, uh, you've, you've heard this. You probably can remember the, the flannel board pictures of this story. Um, even if you didn't grow up in Sunday school, this is a story which you've probably heard at one time or in some way, shape, or form. Jesus has been teaching with his disciples and teaching the crowds that had gathered along with them. He'd been doing some healing. And after a, day, a long day of doing that, he said to his disciples, let's go across the lake. For they had been near the lake, or the, the Sea of Galilee, which they call the lake as well. And so he told, told his disciples, let's go get in the boat, and let's go across to the other side. And so this is where Matthew 8 picks up at verse 23. It says, then he got into the boat, and his disciples followed him. Suddenly a furious storm came up on the lake so that they, the waves swept over the boat. But Jesus was sleeping. The disciples went and woke him saying, Lord, save us. We're going to drown. He replied, you have little faith. Why are you afraid? Then he got up and rebuked the wind and the waves, and it was completely calm. The men were amazed and asked, what kind of man is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. Now, I want you to picture that scene, okay? The way the Gospels, the way that Matthew and actually the other, other, two of the other Gospel writers write this story, to me it's very plain. But I want you to use your imagination for a moment. I want you to use your imagination to, to fill it out, to fill out the details. Um, we're all good at that. I mean, we've all seen Hollywoodized versions of stories before and how they, they can add the details and things like that. But I want to share this with you again, and I want you to use your imagination. And I'm going to embellish a little bit uh, the story. Jesus was exhausted. He was tired. He'd been teaching, healing, and he wanted to kind of get away for some time alone. So he told his disciples, Let's go out across the sea. So they got into this boat. It was a, probably a pretty good-sized boat for his disciples and he to be in. And if you remember, several of his disciples were fishermen. They were familiar with not only being in a boat, but they were familiar with the weather patterns there on the Sea of Galilee. And if you've ever been in a place where weather can change in an instant, the Sea of Galilee is one of those places. So they're out on the sea. Jesus is sleeping in the back of the boat. They're slowly crossing the waters, and all of a sudden the storm comes up. And that's, that's a normal thing for the Sea of Galilee. Yet this storm was something a little different. It was intense. The wind was blowing, the waves were crashing, there was probably thunder and lightning, rain, all sorts of things happening. Even to the extent 
that these disciples who were fishermen, who were used to being out in the water, who that was their, their second home, they were frightened. They were afraid. So you've got probably 12 men trying to row this boat, trying to get this through this storm, trying to bail the water out of the boat because it was getting swamped. And suddenly somebody realizes, hey, we got another guy back there. He can come and help us too. So they went and woke Jesus up. Hey, Jesus, come and help us. We're going to drown. Don't you care that we're about to drown? Now, at this point, I want to interject something. I don't think that the disciples, as they went to wake Jesus up, were thinking, hey, this guy can calm the waves and the storm and the wind and the rain. I think they were really looking for another set of hands to take care of the, the water that was coming in the boat or the oars that needed to be rowed with. And I say that because of their response at the end of the, end of the passage. But Jesus wakes up, and whether he was fast asleep or maybe he was just, he had woken up because of some of the rain and, the stu and such, and he was just pretending to be asleep to see what the disciples would do. I don't know. But he kind of woke up, got up and said, where's your faith? Why are you afraid? Which was not the, the response the disciples were looking for. And Jesus stood up, and however you picture it, maybe he raised his hands, maybe he just stood up in the back of the boat and told the wind and the waves to be still. And they were. The sea went from huge white caps and waves and the wind blowing and the rain falling to calm water, smooth as glass. Wind was not blowing. The rains went away. The clouds dissipated. And their response was, who is this man? Who is this man? That even the wind and the waves obey him. Now there's a couple things that I want to pull out for, for you in this story. Number one is, is something I mentioned just a minute ago. The disciples were probably looking for Jesus to have a, just to have another set of hands to take care of stuff on the boat. They wanted somebody to help bail the water. To lower the sails or to row the oars, whatever they needed on the boat at that time. And the thing is, they looked at Jesus even after all they had seen and heard as just a man. Who is this man that even the wind and the waves obey? And they were still afraid. They were still afraid, not of the wind and the waves, but it says, Scripture says they were afraid of what Jesus did. They had, they had never seen power. They had never seen a miracle to this extent. Yes, they had seen people healed. They had heard Jesus' teachings. But they had never seen somebody with words say, calm. And the storm went away. This is a powerful story. Not only for the disciples, I can't imagine being in their place. I can't imagine being in the place of the disciples on this boat. And Jesus says to them, where is your faith? In other words, he's saying, why don't you remember the things that I did earlier today, yesterday, the week before? Don't you remember all those things that I, 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 the miracles that I did, the things that I taught? 
Where is your faith? Will you calm the storm? Now, I, I pray that you and I will never be in a, a storm like that out on the waters. That's a scary thing. I remember a friend of mine telling me, he, was a, he served on, in World War II uh, in the Pacific Theater on, on some of the Navy ships, about some of the storms that they would go through, and the big, not, not, you're not a carrier, but some of the big ships that would literally go underwater. And water would be coming down the smokestacks into the boiler because of the storms that they were going through. The waves were so big and so high. And that's how the disciples felt. They were going to drown. They were going to die on the lake there. Yet Jesus says, where is your faith? I want to pull this pull out of this story. Not just the story of the storm on the Sea of Galilee. But I want to also pull out of, out of this story the things that you and I face in our lives. We're 2,000-ish years removed from this story. Yet you and I, you and I struggle with storms of our lives. Storms in our lives. And our response, I dare say often, is exactly like the disciples. Jesus, don't you care that I'm going to drown? It could be facing a storm of financial issues. Job issues, relationship issues. We could be facing a storm that we don't know what, what's going to happen next. We don't know where things are going to go. We don't know what the future holds. If you remember last week, we talked about the Israelites as they went into the promised land, or were about to go into the promised land, and the spies that went in. On one hand, they came back with, with huge amounts of, of fruit and said, this is what the land produces. These are good things. It's a land flowing with milk and honey. On the other hand, they came back as well and said, these guys are big. They are well fortified in their cities, and we're like grasshoppers to them. There is no way we can beat them. And I hope that you took your, your, your page home. Go to the next slide. That looked like this. It's up on the screen. I hope you filled that out a little bit. And thought about it. If you didn't, I encourage you to do that this week. What are the possibilities and opportunities for the new year for yourself, for your family, for the church? But also, what are the unknowns? What are the obstacles? The mountains. The fire. The things that you and I face that cause us to say, God, where are you? Don't you care I'm going under? Don't you care I'm going under for the third time? And I can't do this anymore. It's where the disciples were. They had no idea what to do in the middle of that lake. They had no idea where to go in the middle of, of all the things that were going on. Yet they cried out to Jesus, expecting one thing and getting something completely different. When you and I, when you and I face those storms of life, those times where we may be in the fire, where we may be facing a huge mountain, that we don't know what, what to do with. Who do we cry out to? Where is our faith in the midst of all these things? The disciples cried out to Jesus, don't you care we're going to drown? And Jesus got up and said, be still. The 
You know what? I can imagine Jesus doing that and then going back to sleep. Can't you? Says, okay, the storm's quiet. I'm going back to bed. You guys pick up the oars and row, row to the rest of the other side of the lake. It's possible. I don't know. It's one of those things I wish the the, the gospel writers which would, would, would have told us. But where do we put our faith when we face those struggles? Where do we put our trust? And just like last week, with Caleb and Joshua, the two spies who said, we can go and do this. We can go and take this land, for God is with us. They knew where to put their faith. They knew where to put their trust, and they put it in God. But that didn't mean they just sat back and watched God work or looked for God to work. They knew they had to participate in what was going on. They knew they had to do their part in all of this. And so when they did go into the promised land, they became some of the leaders of those who went in, of, of the different tribes and armies that went in. They knew that they were going to have to continue to trust in God through the process, and it wasn't an easy journey. They were going into a land full, filled with milk and honey, but they, their journey was full of ups and downs, good battles and bad battles. Good things happening and uncertain, unknowns, things that were going on. The disciples in the boat, Jesus chastised them, asked them the question, where is your faith? Jesus asks you and I that same question, where is our faith? Where is our faith as, as individuals? Where is our faith as families? Where is our faith as a church? Are we going to trust in the provisions that God is working in our lives? And are we going to participate in those, those actions of God? Or are we going to say to ourselves, I'm going to trust in things of this world more. I'm going to trust in the, the, the process, the way the world thinks, more than I'm going to trust in God. And yes, there are things in this world that we need. Absolutely. Yet, where is our trust? Where, where do we put our faith in? And by putting our faith in God, that means we trust that God is who God says God is. That means we look at Jesus as more than just a man, but as the Son of God. That means we listen to the Holy Spirit that guides and directs us in ways that will take us out of our comfort zone. That means we take the words that Jesus speaks to us in the Gospels. We heard this in Sunday school. We read the words, we hear the words that Jesus teaches us, and we, we do them. We do them. Don't worry. Love your neighbor and love your enemy. Work for the, seek the kingdom of God. All sorts of different things Jesus tells us that are practical applications for our daily lives. That say to you and I, this is what I must do. This is what I have to do. I have to go and love my neighbor. I have to love my enemy. I have to forgive those around me. Because God's forgiven me. I have to do these different things so that I'm acting in faith with what God has called me to do. 
We trust that God's going to provide for us. Maybe not in ways we expect. The disciples were expecting Jesus to probably get up and grab a bucket and bail out the boat. Or grab an oar and try to, to continue to row through the, the wind and the waves. But Jesus stood up and said, be still. That scared the disciples. Who is this man? Where is our faith? I hope that sometime in your life that you have seen the power of God that has come in the midst of storms. You know, the Bible is full of stories of storms, of things that, that people went through. You know, we, we talk about the, the Israelites at the Red Sea, how, G, how God split those waters and allowed them to pass through. We talk about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in that fiery furnace that was so hot that it killed the guards even on the outside. And there were, they were in there. And Jesus was in there with them. There was a fourth person in there with them. And they came out of there not even smelling of smoke. You hear stories like that all throughout Scripture where there's trust and faith. And how important that is for you and I even today. So I hope there's been some time in your life where God has met you in the midst of those storms has met you in the midst of that uncertainty and that, that fear, that worry. And it's at peace. But God has provided what you need at that time. It may not be everything that you, you thought, but usually it's more than what you, what you need. It's those times that we remember. It's those times that we keep in our minds and say, yes, God does work. God does meet me here. God does provide for me, for my family, for my community, for my church, for what I need. Can I trust God in this situation? Will I trust God in this situation? That is so vitally important for us. Now you may be asking, well, what did the disciples do to participate in what Jesus did here? Like the Israelites back in Numbers from last week. Well, they didn't necessarily participate in what Jesus did in calming the waters, calming the storm. But they had to row. Jesus calmed the storm. There was no waves, no wind. They couldn't raise the sail and continue across the lake. They had to pick up the oars and row. They had to pick up the oars and move the boat from wherever they were in the middle of that lake over to the shore. Sometimes you and I have to pick up the oars, pick up the, the things that that are around us and do what we need to to move forward. We recognize God's presence. We recognize God's action, God's activity with us. And yet there are still things we need to do to pick up the oars, so to speak, and move us forward. Move us to where God's calling us to. Sometimes that may be uh, greater participation in the church body. Sometimes that may be trusting that God's going to provide for us as we give, as we share. Sometimes that's stepping out of our comfort zone. Saying, God, I, I'm scared to do this. I don't know what that's going to mean. I don't know what that's going to entail. But I want to trust you, God. I want to trust you. I want to step out in faith. Because I know that's what you're calling me to do. This coming year, in 2023, there are going to be a lot of opportunities and possibilities for this church to move forward. 
The other side of that's also true. There's a lot of fear, a lot of unknowns, a lot of mountains. Yet those are also opportunities and possibilities for us to trust in God. For us to say, God, we bring this before you in prayer. We lift before you this need. We ask that you provide for this need, but we also ask that you show us how we can participate and be more faithful and be more trusting. And how important that is for you and I to then be obedient, to be obedient in what God is calling us to, to be obedient to pick up those oars and move us forward to pick up the, the things that need to be done, even if they're outside of our comfort zone. Excuse me, our comfort zone. Even if we feel we have no clue what we're doing. God says to you and I, follow me. Follow me. And I will move you forward. I want to show you the, the video again that we watched last week. Uh, some of you weren't here, and if you were online, you didn't get to see it. But I want to show this to you again because it, it still speaks to what we're talking about today. So, Ronnie, would you pull that video up? This new year, we cry out to you. The one who restores broken hearts. Who refreshes tired spirits. things need. Let our faith and hope be born again today. Help us to let go of the past. Stop looking back. Turn our eyes toward you. Well, the video wasn't as smooth as it was last week. I apologize for that. Um, but I want us to just think about those things for a moment. As we move into this new year, where is our faith going to be? Where are we putting our effort and our energy? Where are we participating with God and what God is doing in our midst? How are we paving the way for others to hear the message and the word of God? What are we doing? What are you doing? What am I doing to participate with God in God's plan? Are we seeking the kingdom of God in all things that we do? We're going to continue this series over the next few weeks, and we'll flesh some of those things out as well. But this morning, I want to leave you with just that simple thought. 
when we face, when you face those mountains, those storms of life, put your trust, your faith in God. Put your trust in God and continue to walk with God. Continue to walk in faith and see what God's going to do. I'm sure it will be something more than what you and I can imagine. Something that will change our idea of what God does. And where we will never look at God's power and God's working the same again. You pray with me. Gracious God, we do come this morning then knowing that you are with us. Knowing that even in the midst of storms, that you walk with us. Your rod and your staff, they comfort us and they protect us even in the darkest nights. That valley, that shadow, that dark valley, we know that you are with us. And so, Lord, we put our trust in you. We put our faith in you. Provide for us. Take care of us. And empower us to continue to live a life with you. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. In just a few minutes, uh, Audrey's going to come and lead us in communion this morning. And uh, as in preparation for that, let us sing together, Raise a Hallelujah. Have you been to the beach lately? Wow, stormy over there. And in the in my Bible, it said that the, on the Sea of Galilee, they had waves twenty foot high. 
if my husband was here, I could say, how far is 20 feet? And Jim, you know how far 20 feet is. Is that 20 feet? Up well, to well, the, pretty, maybe. Probably pretty close to that there. Okay, okay. Um, those are pretty big waves. Over at the beach this weekend, they said there were 16 foot waves. And people were warned to stay off the beach. And where the tide had come up, it rearranged everything. Where you went last year and you had a favorite log to sit on, it was gone. It was way up in the sand dunes. So the storms do come. And I love the idea that when they were in trouble, and I loved, oh, we are so blessed to have this pastor. He had a new insight. I taught that story, I heard that story, and I never caught that idea that the disciples were just going to have him help man the waves and go on the boat. They didn't realize he was God. He was Father God in general. So um, that's an interesting take on it. But you know, there are other storms we go through besides those ones at the beach, you know, that are calm. The wind howls and you're scared to death. But you know, there's storms in our lives, terrible storms. People we love, we watch them. We can't eat, we can't breathe, we get sick, they die in our arms. How do we make sense of all this? Well, the disciples got to get Jesus, and that's what we can do too. When those storms hit us, we may buffer it all away, and, and we just can't think, what am I going to do? How can I live through this? Go to Jesus. He loved you. And I love the fact that our church does communion. This is a church that has open communion. Everybody here can take communion. And if you have one of these little cups, you can pull out the And remember that Christ died. He gave his body. He told the disciples, this is my body given for you. And he went to that cross and he died for me. And I like taking communion because I think at this point in my life, it's, I look back on things I've done wrong, but it's more things I'm not doing that I should be doing. I love the charge you gave us, Dara. Get out there and do stuff. <laughs> Visit that sick neighbor. Make those cookies. Visit those people. Bring those socks. And fill those tubs in the back. Love that brother. So let's take our communion wafer and let's remember Christ's body given for you. And Jesus said, and this is my blood given for you, shed for you. And as we drink this, let's remember that Savior on the cross doing it for us. We're all sinners. We've all sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But when he died on that cross, when he shed that blood, we're redeemed. Let's drink this in remembrance of him. If you can believe, 70 years ago, when I was a teenager, there was a song we used to sing. It was called Safe Am I. I bet, Marcia, you remember it. I wish I could have her sing it. The words of that song where safe am I in the hollow of his hand, sheltered o'er with his love forevermore. No ill can harm me, no foe alarm me, for he keeps forevermore. Safe am I in the hollow of his hand. So when life storms hit you, the, the physical ones and the, the mental and the, the spiritual ones, 
Just remember you're safe in the hollow of his hands. Shall we pray? We thank you, Lord, that you died on that cross. You died for me. You covered my sins, all the wrong and bad things I've ever done. And I can leave here today forgiven, redeemed because of you. Guide us now as we leave this place. Give us energy. Lift us up like eagles. Let us uh, be strong and fervent, working for you. We love you, Jesus, and pray in your name. Amen. Thank you, Audrey. I appreciate those words of communion as we, as we celebrate the, the gift that Jesus is to you and I and as we remember what he did for us on the cross. Uh, well, I want to invite you to do something and be a part of something this morning, and that's in the, the work and ministry of, of the church. And w one of the ways in which we do that is, is through being here this morning, participating in, in Sunday school or uh, CWF or the men's Bible study or the different things that the church does, but also through our offerings and the gifts that we do. Our offerings enable us, allow us as the First Christian Church here in Dallas to have a ministry and to not only minister here in Dallas, but to minister across the state and even around the world through the various things that, that, that you and I do. So I invite you to, to give of your, your tithes and offerings this morning, whether it's in the box that's in the back there as you leave this morning or through our uh, website at dallasfirstcc.com. Uh, there's a button there to allow you to give online, and we encourage you to do so because that is important that, that you and I uh, give and contribute and help support the ministry of, of the church in a variety of different ways. And so we encourage you to be a part of that. Uh, a few other announcements this morning as we, as we share them together. First of all, we, we had collected, because of your generosity, 80 pounds of food for the Dallas Food Bank last week. And they were very excited to get that with the wide variety of food that was given. And we've actually got more for, for next week. We've got, we've got a head start for next month. So we encourage you to uh, be a part of that and to celebrate that. Your gifts will help uh, families throughout this area uh, who are food sh short of food in a variety of ways. Uh, so we encourage you to, do to look forward to that and to celebrate the gifts from this month as well. Uh, we have our the, the men's Bible study. I got, got to turn around and see what's up there exactly. The men's Bible study continues to meet at 8.30 on Thursdays, and we encourage all men who can to be here and, and to participate in that. It's, it's an hour and a half time where we gather together. Uh, we have coffee, and we sh share in the Word of God. We share prayers together, and we share just some fellowship time together. We encourage you to be able to do that as, as best you can. Also, the, the Zoom Friday and Wednesday Zoom times are still happening, and if you don't get the, the links for those, uh, let me know, and we'll be, be sure to get those to you if you can be a part of those. If you're working or just can't get on a uh, line with us, we encourage you to pray during that noon hour sometime for those in the life of the church, in the, on the prayer list, and a variety of other things as well. So, um, the socks. You, many of you saw the, the baskets in the back there as you came in. Uh, we are collecting socks for the uh, Polk County Community Connect, and we encourage you to buy them. We're short on time, though. The, the last Sunday to collect those is next Sunday because the, the Community con Connect is the 24th, which would be the following Tuesday. So we encourage you, as you can, to, to go, bring, go buy some socks, men's, women's, children's socks, and bring them in. This is for those who uh, are homeless, who are near homeless, who are struggling with different things. One of the greatest needs that, that is, is shared is the need for socks. I'm sure you can all remember what having wet, dirty socks feels like. It's not pleasant. And so having clean, fresh socks is a great gift that we can give. So we encourage you to, to be able to do that as well. Also, our prayer brochure and the family visitor are back there uh, for you to pick up and to have available for you for this month. It is a, um, a good resource about what's coming up this, during this month. Uh, also, it's not on the, on the screen, but uh, two weeks from today, the 20, 29th, uh, we'll be having a potluck, fifth Sunday potluck after church, and we encourage you to come and be a part of that. We'll be having some, some 
kind of question, answer, uh, discussion, uh, filling in about what's going on in the life of the church. Um, you can call it a state of the church. I don't know what you want to call it, but just, just a time of, of sharing, talking about what's going on in the life of the church, where we're headed, and uh, some of the needs that we might have. So we encourage you to come and be a part of that as well and how important that is for you to, uh, to not only be able to ask questions, but to, to share and to uh, hear uh, some, some things that are going on. We encourage you to be a part of that as well. Are there other announcements this morning that I've forgotten? Did I get them all, Marcia? Yeah. That's one of those prayer requests that we continue to pray for, for Anna and her, her illness, and just to be able to eat to, for healing and to, uh, not only physical, but, but emotional and mental healing as well. Continue to pray for Anna and Abar. Uh, in the bulletin, you'll notice that there are uh, birthdays and anniversaries that are, are listed there. Uh, there is one that's missing, though, and I was uh, notified by a little angel this morning that we have a birthday that's tomorrow that we'd like to sing happy birthday for. Uh, Laurel's birthday is tomorrow. And so would you s join us singing a happy birthday to, to Laurel this morning? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, and we hope it's a great day for you tomorrow. So would you stand as we sing our closing song this morning? This is one of those hymns that reminds us how important it is to put our faith and our trust in God, to be strong in God in all that we do and all that we go through. go in peace. May you go in trusting faith that God is present in the midst of our storms. And may we put our full trust and participation in what God is doing in our lives. May you go in peace. Amen.